you waiting, huh? So, uh, Hotline Fortress, am I right? I'm really sorry it took me so long. So, what exactly happened? Well, um, life happened and also YouTube. I recently started a new job a couple months ago and I was really busy with that and I'm also still making videos on the side. So, you know, YouTube is my passion and, you know, I'm, I'm gonna put videos above the game usually. As for the game itself, I was just basically implementing a lot of features and I was gonna release a small demo with only like the, the best features so that people would have like a lot of stuff to work with and a lot of stuff to look forward to. But the bug fixing took so long and I was also gonna wait until the sprite had finished enough sprites so everything would look nice and stuff but uh, the search for the sprite took way too long and I didn't want to keep people waiting so now I'm just really releasing a small alpha version even though I really hate doing that. I really lo always love showing off as much as possible to like hey here look at this demo look this is exactly what the game will look like just smaller and stuff but I can't do that this time. But you're not here for that, are you? No, you want to hear what's going on with the game. So the game is actually coming along very nicely. I'm mostly just fixing and adjusting certain things like player and enemy behavior and afterwards it's gonna be it's gonna be really smooth sailing because I just have to add some new weapons and some new enemies which should be really simple and even creating new levels would be gonna be totally easy. So you're not gonna have to wait too long for future updates, uh, I think, since fixing bugs is gonna take the most amount of time and adding new stuff isn't really. I also chose a Spriter finally, yes, Lord Helix, or Lord Helix, I think it's Lord Helix, Lord Helix is gonna overhaul all the sprites and make entirely new ones. Here you can actually see on screen a couple of sprites that uh, they made already and I really do think it fits the style I'm going for so I'm really happy about that. It also means that I don't have to work on the sprites myself and I can focus on the programming and the level design and stuff so now it's gonna be a lot simpler for me. I do not have a musician yet but I have been talking to some. I've decided that I'm definitely going for this 60s or 70s aesthetic like TF2. Soundtracks of movies like James Bond can also serve as an inspiration. Um, so if you're capable of that or you know someone who's capable of making music like that so let me know because I am looking for musicians still. Tell me on Twitter, link me stuff, especially link me music. Make a small demo or something, just a track of like 30 seconds and stuff, so I know what to expect. The story for the game is also about done. Uh, I at least know the general outline. It's gonna be mostly gonna be just the mercs doing their own thing, like uh, going on various missions. There's also gonna be flashbacks to their pasts, uh, but I'm not gonna spoil anything though, uh, because uh, I have a couple of very nice things planned. If you have any story ideas, then please let me know because I would love to hear them. I'm not a story writer myself, so if anyone can give me like some, just some quick ideas, I'll see if I can implement them somehow. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they'll just serve as uh, inspiration for other ideas, who knows. But uh, please actually stop telling me to make the story about robots and MVM because that is not gonna happen. Grey Man has absolutely nothing to do with the story and I think it's actually quite uninteresting to make it about an already existing story. I wanna go in my own direction. It's more gonna be of an alternate reality or alternate history or something. Now the thing that is gonna interest the most people, that demo, which is actually out by the way. The link is in the comments in the description, um, the patrons actually got to play it a week earlier, unless you are a patron, in which case you can play it right now, but you're watching the video, so you know that, you know. Anyway, the demo is nothing flashy or interesting to look at, it still uses the unfinished sprites from Hotline Miami, it's very bare bones. I really just wanted to showcase some of the, the features that I made. Uh, as I said, I wanted to wait for a Spider, but it took so long and Lord Helix will overhaul all the sprites in the future, but that's still gonna take some time and I didn't wanna keep anyone waiting. I really just wanted to show you, hey guys, I'm still working on it. These are the features you can count on, you know? It's just a proof of concept, so don't expect any nice graphics, it's just everything that is in the game, like all the graphics and, and also the sounds and of course the music, which is not there actually. It's gonna be changed in the future and, and updated, so please only pay attention to the gameplay instead, unless certain finished graphics or like uh, certain designs really hinder the gameplay somehow. I'm gonna get to those later, uh, I'm gonna explain them. If there's anything you really don't like, like, oh man, please, please don't do that at all, like, oh, you're going for something that, nah, that that's not nice, tell me immediately because I have to know these things, okay? That's what the demo's for, just for you giving me feedback. Now let's get to the actual changes of the game. The gameplay. 
The most obvious thing that you'll likely notice is the lighting, which is actually a complete overhaul of the old lighting system. I implemented actual light and shadows, even some dynamic lighting, which is still a bit laggy at the moment, so it's not in the demo actually, but I can implement that if I want to. The lighting is mostly just for aesthetic reasons, to make the levels look nicer and more realistic. I also made the walls thicker as a result, it's just how the engine works, uh, but it does work because the sprites are gonna be upscaled, and it's, it's gonna look nicer in the end, I think. The lighting itself doesn't work so well with doors, uh, but um, no, it's actually the light going through from underneath the door, so it's a feature. It's a feature. It's a feature. It's a feature. No, but um, I'm actually kidding. It's a bug, and I may be able to fix that for the future. I'm not sure, though. It's not a game breaker, I think, though. I am also able to implement colored lights and shadows in the future. I mean, I can't do that now, but I just didn't do it. I really didn't see a reason for doing that, just so you know. But basically, I think the lighting is gonna make the game look more realistic and, you know, cooler. I mean, who doesn't like shadows? There's also a blood and gore engine now, which you can see on the screen all the time. And also, I implemented doors, which now can knock enemies over. Doors are also more consistent than in Hotline Miami, because there's only two states, either open and closed, and nothing in between. Like, if it's opening, it, it can't be, like, closed immediately, it has to, has to be fully open or it has to be fully closed. Uh, they also don't constantly open while you or the enemies are inside of them. You can also shoot through doors without opening them, by the way, so you have the upper hand. I actually don't remember if enemies can do that. I don't think enemies can shoot through doors. Maybe some enemies can do that in the future. Weapons also bounce off walls now, which is it just doesn't really interest many, but I think it's cool. I may actually play with that idea a lot more in the future. I haven't decided about that yet. And there's also a death cam when you get killed by enemies, so you actually know who killed you and where they were. So if someone should kill you from off screen, you actually know that they're there at least. The enemies! I did a massive AI overhaul. They are much smarter now. I also implemented some smoother movement, though it is causing some shivering issues. I will have to iron that out. Worst case scenario, I might have to remove the smooth movement. It's just so they're gonna move at 45 degree angles, which might not look so nicely, but it's nothing major. It's not gonna break any games. It's just gonna be look a bit uh, not as nice, I guess. Enemies are also less deadly, they don't attack as quickly as before, so fights should be more fair, but please give me feedback on that, because I don't want to make it too unfair, you really need some really quick reflexes right now, and I don't know if that's what people enjoy. I mean, having quick reflexes obviously is a good thing, but having to react within 0.001 second is not fun at all, so I want to get the sweet spot between difficult and fun. I also fixed some bugs, it's not really interesting, and also one thing I implemented is if there's only one enemy remaining, an arrow will actually point towards them if they are too far away, which should make the bigger levels especially less annoying, because you don't have to search the entire room around that one last enemy or something. And one thing that I really enjoy is that enemies sometimes have a small chance to wet themselves when they die. It's just funny. The classes! First up, Scout, who is now melee only. He only has the Sandman, and he can also launch a Sandman ball, which knocks over enemies, so you can execute them. His Dawn rule also knocks enemies over, and it doesn't stop if you hit an enemy, so you can knock over multiple ones. So if there's a big group of enemies, you can just roll in there, knock them all over, and execute them one by one. So he's really just a melee class, he's not really all that useful on long distance, and he also executes much slower than anyone else. So it's basically just like, run in, kill some people, run back out, run in, kill some people, run back out, that's how Scout plays. Just like in TF2, I guess. Pyro has been implemented, and they are flamethrower only, which you have to use until the ammo is depleted. The flamethrower obviously sets enemies on fire, and the flames actually somewhat move with you, which is a bit buggy, but it means that the flames are not gonna be much shorter if you run towards someone, so it's not like you have to run away from people, you can actually run towards them and still be effective. It's still a bit buggy, it looks a bit wonky, you're gonna notice it if you move around, so I may be able to fix that somehow, I'll have to see about that. The flamethrower can actually kill everyone and is in general very powerful, it can even kill the, the fat guys within a couple of seconds, but enemies take a while to get set on fire, so you have to really hold down the flamethrower, you can't just huff and sting and then just run back out like in Hotline Miami 2. It's also really useless at long range, so you really have to bait enemies or lure them out with a sound, and that also makes a very loud noise, so you cannot be sneaky with a pyro. If you, if you use the flamethrower, everyone is gonna know it. Secondary is the air blast, which knocks enemies over, even multiple enemies at once, which is somehow like a panic mode button. Like, too many enemies are roaming in at once, you can just knock them all over and then execute them or just run back out or something. The air blast also breaks doors, which encycles enemies, as I said earlier. Also, if you knock an enemy a KO and let the door fall on them, they also die. 
The air blast is also loud, so Pyro cannot be sneaky at all, unless you throw the flamethrower away, then you can like pick up a bat or a shotgun and stuff, and it will be more useful at long range. Also, if you throw the flamethrower away, the enemies do not pick it up, and you can kill them with it. Heavy has also been implemented with his minigun, and you have to also use it until the ammo is depleted. The minigun needs to be spun up and spun down, so you can fire immediately. And it is also loud only like the flamethrower, so you really have to pick your battles. You can also bait them, but it's gonna be it's gonna be a bit harder than with Pyro. As the secondary, while using the minigun, he can actually use it to punch enemies, and you can also use it to break doors, like with the air blast, which is also gonna insta kill people. Heavy actually executes much faster than anyone else, and he also throws much faster than anyone else. So if the minigun is empty, you can just throw it really easily away and still kill someone with it. And finally, the spy has been implemented, who is again like scout melee only, using only the knife. The knife can insta-kill anyone, except for the fat guys, who in the future are going to require a backstab and can only get knocked over otherwise. I'm actually not too sure about this, I might make it in the future that Spy also just knocks over regular enemies, so you have to execute them, but he also executes really quickly, and it's not gonna be a huge issue, it's just that you really also have to pick your battles, you can't just run in a room and kill everyone inside, so give me feedback on that if you would like to see that, or if the current system works, because I'm asking what's fun for people, I know what's fun for me, but what's fun for me isn't fun for everyone. So let me know if you would like it, if you had to backstab everyone, and if hitting them from the front only knocked them over. Spine can also go invisible, which makes enemies stop chasing you, and that happens almost instantly, even uncloaking. Bumping into enemies doesn't reveal you in any way, you can actually stand inside of them if you want to, but the invisibility needs to recharge, so use it sparingly. You can just spam it or like walk through the entire level of being invisible. Spy can also hide in the shadows, which is not very relevant at the moment, but it will make sense in the future. But you can still hide in the shadows if you have no cloak, for example, so it's not, it's not completely unnecessary at the moment. And that is pretty much all the things I added so far. I know it's not much, I was mostly just fixing bugs and glitches and adjusting the enemy AI and stuff, so I am going to add a lot more things in the future, but right now I really had to fix a lot of stuff. Sorry it took so long, again. As for the future, I'm not gonna reveal too much at the moment, and I'm also not promising anything, because all of these things can change at pretty much any time. I am going to add the remaining 5 classes, which is gonna be really easy, as I said before. Which is gonna be the soldier with his rocket launcher, which can also destroy walls. You know, there's a bit of strategy involved, like destroy this wall so you can go through there, get this weapon, but the enemies can also go through there, or you destroy an enemy through the wall. Also the demo knight, which is gonna be melee only, but he can charge forward, like in TF2 with a shield, which is also gonna be on a cooldown, but he can also charge around in circles and stuff. It's gonna, it's gonna be really fun, actually. The engineer, of course, which... Not gonna reveal what it's gonna be, but I have a very interesting thing planned, and I think people are gonna like it. I'm certainly gonna like it. And also the medic for who I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna do with him. I have an idea, but I'm not entirely satisfied with it, so it would be really nice if you could give me ideas on what medic could do. Again, I'm not, not, I'm not gonna say what it's gonna be, because I, I don't wanna throw it out there, but I have about an idea, so let me, just let me know if you have any ideas. And finally, the sniper, who is gonna use the sniper rifle and Kukri. I haven't really decided yet if the sniper rifle is gonna have infinite ammo, or if it's gonna run out of ammo, and you're gonna be forced to use Kukri only, and you have to find ammo boxes, like in Hotline Miami 2, or if he's gonna throw it away. I really don't know about that. It would also be nice if you could give me feedback on that. For enemies, I'm gonna be adding some smarter enemies that you can trick as easily. They're gonna be behaving quite realistically, like actual players perhaps. You know, I don't wanna overhype you, I don't wanna be Peter Molyneux or something, but if I can implement that properly, it should be a lot more difficult but also more rewarding to take them down. Also gonna be adding more varied enemy types based on the TF2 classes like a minigunner or a medic and a sniper. And also some bosses which I hope are gonna be more fun than the one in Hotline Miami which were basically just hold out until you can kill them. There's gonna be more strategy involved I think. Maybe some bosses are actually gonna be really difficult but if you know what you're doing you can do them within like 5 seconds. Also gonna be implementing a combo and point system like in Hotline Miami. I'm also gonna be choosing a musician if you know anyone or if you are someone who can 
composed some music, you know, the 60s, 70s, TF2, James Bond kind of soundtrack. Then let me know and also like compose some short tracks, like 30 seconds. That's completely fine. Just send it to me on Twitter or something. I'm gonna listen to it and then decide if it's gonna fit for the game. I'm also gonna write the story. Again, I have some good ideas. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna connect all of it though. I know about how the game is gonna start and how the game is gonna end. The in-between part is always where I stumble, but I'm gonna figure it out. It's fine. Again, you can suggest some ideas, but I have the main story about written out in my head. I'm also gonna be doing some minor adjustments like better sounds, bug fixes, aesthetic stuff like uh, fixing the lighting bug on the door if possible. Just stuff that looks nice. Now the patrons. I am incredibly sorry it's taking so long. I know I said like, hey, three bucks, you get uh, access to everything a week in advance, but I haven't really done anything so far, so I'm very sorry about that. If it takes you too long, you can just stop being a patron, I will completely understand that, and you can also demand all of your money back if you like. I'm gonna be completely understanding of that, you just have to send me a message on Patreon or something. Totally understand that, that's completely fine. I will use the money to pay the musician and the spider though, so you would be directly supporting the game if you are a patron, and I would really appreciate that. I haven't spent any of it yet, by the way, so if you want it back, just, just say so, okay? That's fine, I can refund it. As for everyone else, basically just play the demo. Let me know what you think and how it plays. Which levels did you think were the best? Which ones did you think were the worst? If there's any favorites or if there's actually just some parts of the levels that you like, like for example, oh, oh, the lower half of this level was really nice. It played really well, but the upper part uh, dragged on for too long. Not many, uh, not many weapons, uh, too many enemies and stuff. That's also perfectly fine. Uh, also let me know where you had the most issues. Like if there's like a huge choke point, like oh, I kept dying at this part. It was really not fun or this enemy kept sniping me from off screen. Just let me know. I'm just collecting ideas. I don't really know much about level design. Uh, I have about an idea, but I'm really just throwing things at the wall to see what sticks, because this is very new for me, of course. Also, let me know which were the best levels for each class and which were the worst for each class. Like, for example, the second level was way too bad for Spy because there were too many ranged enemies, or uh, the third level was really good for Pyro because there was a lot of close quarters, stuff like that. Just tell me what you think of the levels, where the classes shine the most and where they, you know, died the most. Please also notify me of bugs and glitches and I actually set up an email account for that, so just shoot me an email. Tell me which bug or glitch happened, what caused it to happen, or if you don't exactly know, just what happened shortly beforehand. Like, I entered the room and picked up the shotgun and suddenly this one enemy started spinning wildly around and clipped through the wall or something. Uh, do keep it short though, just tell me everything that you think is important, don't write an entire essay because the longer the messages are, the longer it's gonna take for me to read them all. And also suggest some ideas for the game, but don't send me an email for that, just write it underneath the videos or, I don't know, I'm gonna make a game gel page, just write something there if you want. And if you want, you can also become a patron if you just want to support the game or gain access to the demos of the videos a week in advance. And I'm going to be more consistent in the future, so I will release these videos and demos a lot more often, I think. You're not gonna have to wait two or three months for any word from me, okay? So I'm really sorry it took me so long. Again, I'm very sorry. Gonna be more consistent in the future. I am going to be taking my time with the game because I don't want to rush anything. I have no deadline or anything. I want the game to be very nice. So I have no idea when I'm going to release it, but it's likely not going to be happening this year. Again, I want to also make YouTube videos and I have a real life job, so those are also equally as important. So I'm not gonna stress myself, I just don't expect me to work on it day and night, okay? It's a free game after all. But as I said, the demos will come out and maybe let's say every one to two months, okay? So you have something to look forward to. But yeah, just uh, subscribe to me if you wanna see these videos as soon as they come out or become a patron and see them even sooner as they come out or just like the video, share the video, I don't know, these kinds of things, doesn't really matter. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you're gonna enjoy the game and the demo. Give me some feedback. Have a wonderful day and... Goodbye.